Welcome to this Michigan Region 8 MCA training in the Michigan EMS Data System, or MyEMSYS. Uh, today's topic is bad data, good reports. Uh, how we can build reports in the analytical reporting tool that are resilient against uh, bad data. Uh, no matter how hard we try, there's going to be some bad data in the system, some stuff that's just incorrect or missing. And uh, we want to make sure our reports are still fairly reliable, uh, even in the face of having some of that bad data present. Today, we're going to cover two main topics uh, with bad data. One is missing data uh, and how to build a report that accounts for the fact that things may be missing in some of the patient care reports that you're trying to analyze. And uh, you know the, the decisions we have to make in that. The second major topic we'll cover is bad data. So that's going to be where uh, there is data in a patient care report. It's not blank, but it's clearly incorrect. And that can skew our results when we do analytical reports. So we'll look at how to uh, compensate for bad data, missing data and bad data. I wanted to use this picture to illustrate how we can compensate for bad or missing data. This is an old photo from 1895. Uh, it looks pretty bad. You really can't see much in this photo. Using digital photo restoration techniques, uh, photos like this can actually be cleaned up a lot. And uh, this particular photo um, can be cleaned up to look like this. Uh, believe it or not, all that information was there in the original photo. Uh, it was just obscured by lots of, of dirt. So through the techniques that they used, they were able to who, clean up the picture. And this is actually a picture of the construction site uh, for the Golden Gate Bridge. So we can do similar things with our EMS data. Even though there's going to be some dirt in there, there's going to be some stuff missing, uh, we can use techniques to compensate for that and clean things up a bit. Now, it's you know never as good as actually having perfect data right from the start. Uh, but the problem is you'll never have perfect data. And if you wait for perfect data before you do analytical reporting, you'll never really use your data. Um, so we want to jump in. We want to use data even though it's imperfect. Uh, but we want to make sure that we still get some reliable uh, results in our reports. So uh, here's the first example we'll look at, and then we're going to build a report in the system to illustrate this. So let's talk about missing data. And let's say we have a bunch of patient care reports. We have 100 patient care reports in our system, and we're looking at primary impression. And there are three different values that we're finding on these 100 reports. In 30 of the reports, primary impression is not recorded. In another 30 reports, the primary impression is recorded as respiratory distress. And in 40 of the reports, the primary impression is recorded as traumatic injury. Now, my question is, what percentage of PCRs had a primary impression of traumatic injury? Is it option A, which is 40%, that's the traumatic injury, 40 reports divided by the total, 100? Uh, or is it B, 57%, which is uh, obtained by taking those 40 reports divided by the total minus the ones that were blank? So we take 100 minus all of the 30 that were not recorded. We get a total of 70 reports where primary impression was actually filled in. And then we take 40 divided by 70 and get 57%. What do you think you would do in this case? I'd say B. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to depend a little on your scenario. But if you're looking at kind of that uh, relative rate between respiratory distress and traumatic injury, then it's going to be a 57 percent to 43 um, percent balance between the two. Uh, on the other hand, if you were looking specifically at data quality issues, you may uh, you may want to include the 30 where it was not recorded. But you want to be able to to make that decision intentionally, uh, rather than just simply saying, well, 40% uh, of our PCRs are traumatic injury. That's the number we got. So let's take a look at a report here. I'm going to log into uh, Image Trend Elite with my user account.
I'm going to go to the Tools menu and choose Report Writer. And I'm going to create a new report. And I'm using the EMS incidents data set for this report because I want to measure stuff from patient care reports that were submitted. What I'm going to do is just a simple, uh, I want to get primary impression. Uh, so I'm going to get the uh, pri provider primary impression description only. It's going to give us just that text. And uh, then I also want a count of how many reports had each of those primary impressions. So I'm going to create a column. I'm going to call it a count. And we're just going to count all rows. So we're going to get a primary impression with a count of each uh, primary impression that we have. And I've, as I've mentioned in uh, earlier trainings, we're going to set up a criterion uh, where we're going to set a geography to be region eight. Uh, that just uh, speeds up the report so it runs more quickly. Uh, I only have access to stuff in region eight for the most part. So we'll look at agency region, and we'll say that that's equal to uh, region eight. So this is going to run on all data that I have access to in the system. I'll go ahead and click generate report. So here's all of our primary impressions with a count over on the far right. I'm going to make this a little larger. We'll see right up at the top here that we have 165 reports uh, with no primary impression. It's just blank. So we need to be aware of those. Down about in the middle here, you'll see two choices, not applicable and not recorded. Uh, 10 and 15 uh, reports that had those values. And so we want to account for those as well. We have a, oh, I didn't put my total on here. Let me uh, get a total. I'm in the display section. I'm going to look at our count column, and we're going to ask for a total there. We'll run this one more time. OK, so 165 blanks, uh, 10 not applicable, 10, uh, 15 not recorded, total of 822 reports. So we have. Um, you know, about close to a quarter, maybe 20% of our reports have no primary impression. Now, we'd want to take that into account if we're doing some uh, uh, percentage counts on these other values that exist. Okay, so let's dive into those ones that are blank and see what's going on and see how we can build a report that may be more resilient against these uh, blank and missing data. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go back to the columns page, a uh, columns tab, and I'm going to add um, uh, incident patient disposition. So this was the how the call ended, basically. Um, so I'm going to add that in, and I'm just going to move my counts around a little bit here. Okay, so let's go with that. Okay, so uh, I think it has ended up sorting by my count. So I'm going to scroll down to the to some of the ones we want to look at. Um, yeah, it did sort by count. I don't really want to do that. Let's let's sort by primary impression. We'll get it sorted that way. Is it because your count was on the top? Yeah, it was the first column in my report. So apparently, it it sorted it. Uh, just as by default, even though I didn't apply a sort. Okay, now I've applied a sort by primary impression. So we'll see, here's all the ones where the primary impression was blank. And we can look at the disposition over here. And uh, we'll see that a lot of them, see here's 44 where the disposition was canceled. 
Well, that makes sense. Uh, if they never got to scene, they wouldn't have a primary impression. So that's a, a large chunk of the blank primary impressions. Um, 34 here where the disposition was blank. Disposition is a mandatory element. So this is probably reports that were never finished. These are reports that are still in progress and just haven't been filled in all the way yet. Um, we do have 27 where the patient was treated and transported. We would expect a primary impression there. So that truly represents missing data. Um, and we might expect a primary impression when they were treated and transferred as well. We have eight where they were canceled on scene. So that makes sense to have no impression where they assisted another agency or they were standby or no treatment required, um, refused evaluation, canceled on scene, public assist. So many of these we'd see it would make sense to not have a primary impression. Um, as we scroll down to the nots, the not applicables and the not recordeds, here's all the ones that where primary impression was not applicable. Uh, that was 10 uh, calls. And uh, we'll see that these are generally like refusals and standbys. So that makes sense that they would say it's not applicable. And then we had these where it was not recorded and got assist, canceled, transferred care, and refused. So it also makes sense that in a large majority of these ones, that's why we would have no primary impression. So by looking at disposition, we might say, okay, well really, uh, you know, as we look at all the other uh, impressions, by and large, they are treated and transported by this EMS unit or treated and transferred care to another EMS unit. Because of this, those are the two common dispositions where you would um, actually expect that they would have a, a primary impression. So we can clean up our report a bit by adding some criteria on disposition. So I'll go to the criteria tab and I'm gonna add in criteria and I'm gonna choose disposition, the incident patient disposition. And I can say is in, and uh, essentially I'm interested in these uh, cases where the patient was treated, because uh, we would expect a primary impression if the patient was treated. And there may be a few others you would want to grab as well, um, perhaps the dead at scene ones. So I'm going to click Save on that. And uh, we'll go ahead and generate our report again. Okay, so now I have a report where the blank primary impressions are only these ones up here. So what, uh, 43 plus about five, so 48, something like that, instead of 160 something. Um, so they're a much smaller portion of my data now. Uh, the not applicable, only one, not recorded, only four. So, um, and our total is lower now, 567. Uh, so we've we've cut out a lot of the missingness by simply recognizing that we would only have primary impressions when there is, in fact, a patient who was treated. <clears throat> so that cleaned things up quite a lot. Now, I still might decide, well, um, I really, you know, I want to take all of these and I want to compare percentages, for example, and, and I, I really, I just want to cut out all of the blanks, all of the not values so that I only look at impressions, at calls where there was an impression. And we can do that. We can go back to criteria. We can add another criterion, which will be um, primary impression. And we have to wait for the system to catch up with us here. We'll give it a second. There, it finally did it. Okay, so it, we can always type in if we get impatient, but it's easier to select from the list. So primary impression yeah. is not in. And we can come down to not applicable and not recorded. Now you'll notice blank is not one of the options here. So we can have that criterion to say that primary impression is not 
uh, one of those two choices. This would still include our blank primary impressions though. So we can add yet another criterion to say primary impression is not blank. So now we have our dispositions that we're looking for uh, and primary impression is not one of the not values and it's not blank. If we were to have all of those criteria in there, now we will get a list of uh, primary impressions excluding all of those. Um, we'll see a total count, you know, be somewhere around 500. So we don't have the blanks up the top anymore. We don't have the not applicables and not recorded in the middle anymore. And we have our total of 514. So here we have a report that, uh, you know, lots of missing data. This report's still gonna only show us the spots. Uh, it's only gonna show us where data was actually recorded. Of course, depending on your purpose, this may be what you want or it may not be. There are times where you really want to dive into the blank and missing data. Um, you want to highlight it, you want to be aware of it, you want to train people on, on correcting for it. Uh, if you were to really look into missing data with this report, then you might want to switch things around, uh, reverse your criteria to where you're only looking at calls where um, the primary impression was blank or not applicable or not recorded. Uh, we'd still keep the disposition to be this set. So then you would be saying, okay, these are the reports where they should have had a primary impression and they did not. Then you could add other columns to your report, such as the responding unit, the agency, the date time, uh, the crew members, or who created the report. And that would give you something you could use for training and improvement purposes. You could identify the people who are most commonly leaving primary impression blank. You could talk with them and, and train them on uh, filling out primary impressions. So just depends on your use of the data. If you're going after data quality, you may be looking at the blanks. And if you're going after more of the operational or, or clinical analysis, you may want to weed out those blanks so that you can get some distributions that really make sense. So that's some methods that we can use to deal with and compensate for missing data in the system. The next topic uh, I wanna look at is dealing with incorrect data. So let's say we have uh, five patient care reports that we're looking at, and I've listed the arrive scene time and the left scene time for each of the five reports. And over on the right-hand side, I've calculated how many hours and minutes they spent on scene. So the first report, they arrived at 8.05, they left at 8.15, they had a scene time of 10 minutes. The second report, they arrive at 12.58, they leave at 1.08, well, um, the system records everything in 24 hour time. So maybe they meant that that should have been 1308, but what they actually typed in was 108, which gives us negative 11 hours and 50 minutes for our scene time. The next one, they arrive at 1523 and leave at 1520. That's a negative three minutes for scene time. Uh, so we know that's not possible. And then 1808 to 1828, that's a 20 minute scene time. That's nice and clean. And then from one o'clock to 10.10, 10, uh, that gives us nine hours and 10 minutes of scene time. That's kind of long, that seems like an outlier. Maybe they meant to type 0110 for, for 110 and maybe they spent 10 minutes on scene. But what they typed in was 10.10, 10, we got nine hours on scene. So question here is what's the average scene time? Uh, so how would you approach this if you wanted to calculate the average scene time? I would throw out the three outliers. Yeah, you'd have to throw out all three of those, right? The, hopefully you'll have lots of other reports that have good scene times, but you'll have to throw out the negatives um, because they're not possible. And probably that nine hour scene time, maybe that happened in real life, but uh, it's not likely. And, and in any case, even if it happened in real life, it's not representative of what's typical in EMS. It'd be more of a standby probably. Right, a standby or some wilderness rescue or something. Okay, so let's take a look at how we might uh, deal with these sorts of uh, issues in a report. 
Uh, I have my report that I was working with here a minute ago. I'm going to clean up some things. So I'm going to go to the criteria tab first, and I'm going to remove these extra criteria that we added. I'm just going to keep that first criteria for region eight. Um, I'm going to remove my sort that I had applied. And let's start at columns. So I'm actually going to remove uh, my count. I'm going to take off these uh, columns that I was working with earlier. So I'm pretty much back to a blank report now, except for that criterion for region eight. And uh, I'm going to create a column. And I'm going to create an average. I'll call it average uh, scene time. And I'm going to look for uh, something that is called a uh, unit arrived on scene to unit left scene in minutes. Unit arrived on scene to unit left scene in minutes. And I'll go ahead and click add. So I've created one data, uh, one column in my report, which is going to give me an average scene time. So I'm going to go ahead and click Generate Report. We'll give this 15 seconds or so to run. Uh, what we'll see in the results is that I will just have one line in my report. So I'm just going to have one number uh, in this whole report, and it's going to be the average scene time. Okay, so there it is. Average scene time is 30.28 minutes. We're going to kind of keep that in our minds. I'm going to jot that down here on my paper. And we're going to explore the data a little bit. I really recommend whenever you're running reports that aggregate data, whether it's counting or averaging or whatever else, I think it's a really good idea to start out with a detail report where you look at the underlying data and you make sure that you understand the underlying data and you know the nuances and problems that might happen. Once you've really uh, inspected the underlying data, then you can go ahead and, and move to doing your aggregate uh, functions like an average or a count, and you'll know what was under there, and uh, you'll be able to rely on it. So here's our average scene time of about 30 minutes. But let's uh, go play with this a little bit by looking at the details. OK, so we're going to look at. Uh, that same column that I did the average on, which was uh, unit arrived on scene to unit left scene in minutes. We're going to actually inspect that very column. I'm going to go ahead and delete my average for now. And uh, we're going to tell it to sort by that column and generate the report. So now instead of looking at the average, we're going to look at each individual patient care report. We're going to have one number for each patient care report that will indicate what the scene time was for that report. We'll see, first of all, that we have a whole bunch of blanks up at the top. So that's important to note. We do have a few zeros. We have a bunch of numbers that look pretty normal. And I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom now. And we have a few that are in the hundreds of minutes, so several hours. And we have one here at the end that's 1,400 minutes. That's a long time. And when we're taking an average, these numbers down here at the bottom are skewing that average. And then the blanks up at the top are having no impact on the average. They're, they're excluded from the average. Uh, but let's uh, dive into this a little more then. And I want to see um, why those blanks are happening. And I also want to check out these really high scene times as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull um, the unit arrived on scene date time and the unit left scene date time. OK, so I'm going to have what the system calculated as how long they spent on the scene, but I'm going to have the actual two timestamps that it used uh, to make that calculation. And the last thing I want to pull on 
is disposition again. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. All right, so first up at the top, we have the ones with a blank scene time, and we're seeing why it's blank. Uh, in most cases, both the arrive on scene and left scene times were blank, so there was nothing to calculate from. There is one here where they did have an arrive on scene time, but no left scene time. We'll see also that these ones at the top, the disposition was also blank. So these are reports that were never finished. They're not even completed yet. Uh, then we see a bunch where the disposition was canceled. Well, that makes sense. Then if they were canceled prior to arrival, we wouldn't have a scene time. Now we see a few where they arrived on scene, but we don't have a left scene time. If we look in the NIMSA data dictionary, we'll see that it talks about left scene time being uh, applicable to transports where the unit left with a patient um, to go to a destination. And so these refusals, they didn't record a left scene time uh, because they didn't transport a patient. And we're also gonna see a lot where they transferred care to another EMS unit. Now we see some where they were transported by this EMS unit. So these are the ones that are missing data that should be filled in. If you treated and transported, you should know when you arrived and when you left the scene. Okay, and then finally, I wanna scroll down to the very bottom and uh, look at these ones. Let's look at the very bottom one. Um, they arrived on scene on October 4th at 2252 and left scene on October 5th at 2330. So this was over a day on scene. When we look and inspect these times, I bet that they're off by one day. I bet that they arrived at 2252 and left at 2330 on the same night. Uh, either October 4th or October 5th. Um, I'm guessing it was on October 4th, and when they went to fill out their patient care report early in the next morning, the system was defaulting in October 5th as a date, and they just didn't uh, uh, catch that and correct it. Um, the other uh, fairly long scene times we have here of over 200 minutes, uh, we'll see like a, there was a standby, uh, no treatment, treated and released, uh, and other standbys up here as well. So uh, indeed, we do get those long scene times on standbys, which maybe we, uh, we don't care about if we're measuring scene time. We would expect them to be there a long time. So um, what criteria would you consider using to uh, clean up this report and make it a little more resilient? I would say it does not include standbys. Yeah, good. And anything else you would add in? Blank. Blanks, yeah, we could take out blanks. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Let's go to criteria. Let's add in the criteria for disposition. I'm only gonna look at transports. Okay, so these are just our transported calls. Okay, so the other criterion that we can put in is um, a criterion on the scene time itself. So we look at that uh, unit arrived on scene to unit left scene in minutes. And we can say that it is between zero and, um, and I'm gonna pick like 300. So 
uh, and you might even go less. You might go 120 or something. So this is going to say if there's a blank scene time, it's going to be excluded. And if there's a scene time that's more than 300 minutes or five hours, it's also going to be excluded from our report. So we'll click Save. And we'll generate our report. All right, so now we've got a couple that have a zero minute scene time, but no blanks. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we see we max out at 119 here. All the rest were either standbys or over 300 minutes uh, or a treat and release or something. So this gives us a cleaner set of data that we're working with to run our average. So to wrap things up, I'm gonna go back to the columns tab. And I'm gonna take all of these detailed columns off and I'm gonna recreate that average column. Which is taking an average from unit arrived on scene to unit left scene in minutes. Okay, let's uh, add that. And uh, go ahead and generate our report. So the first time that we ran this report, looking at the average, our average scene time was uh, just over 30 minutes. Now that we've done some cleanup, we'll see what we get. Oops, we got an error. I need to go to my sorting tab and take off the sort. That column is no longer on my report. And now we'll generate the report. Okay, average scene time. So this came down to just under 20 minutes. Uh, that was a big difference from 30. And if you're gonna do some kind of public reporting uh, of your agencies, uh, clearly there's a big difference between 20 and 30 uh, when you're talking about average scene time. Now right. to go a bit further, we could uh, actually switch to a median uh, scene time instead. So I'll Do you take think this. if you took, got rid of some of your criteria too, that because you had you know the dead on scenes too, which can take you know a long time if you're waiting for a ME or something like that. If you took those out and just had the actual just patients transported, that yes. would reduce it even more, wouldn't it? That probably would a bit, yeah. If they were dead at scene, even though they ended up transporting this person, they may have sat there on scene for a long time waiting for someone. Yeah, and so that's good to, to really uh, lock down the criteria that you want. Okay, so I'm going to just switch to a median and call it median scene time. There are also options for doing percentiles. So you can do a 90th percentile scene time to say 90% of the time we, are, we spent X minutes or less on scene. Uh, this will be the median, so we'll generate the report one more time. Okay, so there's the median, 16 minutes. That's even shorter. That's saying that uh, half the time uh, we spend 16 minutes or less on the call. The other half the time we're spending 16 minutes or more uh, on the call. And that median is less um, sensitive to those outliers, the, the ones that are, where we're spending 90 minutes or 120 minutes. Uh, and so it, it's more representative of um, uh, how we do most of the time uh, with our scene time. So there we go. Um, from 30 to 20 to 16 minutes average scene time just by uh, locking down our criteria and by considering the use of a median versus a mean or average. And so that's how we can take uh, reports that may have bad data. They may have outliers. They may have negative uh, um, scene times, things like that. We can account for those. We can account for uh, the types of dispositions we're really looking for. Uh, and we can whittle that down to where we get a number that we can really count on. Uh, another thing that we did not do with our criteria that we could have was to exclude interfacility transports. We could look at the type of service requested and only look at 911 calls. Uh, and that would probably bring it down even further 
They may spend longer on scene with an inner facility transport. I don't know. Uh, they certainly would um, have a longer uh, response time with inner facilities from the time they're notified to the time they arrive on scene, because those are often scheduled uh, way in advance. So those are the kinds of things that you can include in your criteria to really get down to the subset of records that you're really interested in. So that's dealing with missing data and dealing with bad data. We can deal with both types of issues and create reports that end up being resilient against those issues. This completes our training today on building good reports even when there's bad data. Thank you.